Hello everyone. So good morning. This is data science fundamentals webinar session four. And in this session, I'm going to cover the fundamentals of data science and artificial intelligence, how these broad fields are getting overlapped and what are the different project ideas, use cases and job profiles are there in the market on which uh, being a data scientist we should think upon. So let's just start the session. Let me share my screen and we'll be going to understand uh, the fundamentals as well as the project ideas related to data science, AI and other related interdisciplinary um, courses. So let me start with this understanding what is artificial intelligence and where data science lies in, right? So basically artificial intelligence is the design of intelligence in an artificial device, right? So here we can see this is the bigger circle which says it is artificial intelligence. So it's a bigger term, anything which is consisting of intelligence lies in this field. So how we can define intelligence? This comes first in our mind. To make it artificial, let's first understand what is natural intelligence. So natural intelligence is something which we humans get by birth. And then we evolve through the years. We, we learn by experiences. We learn by seeing other people. We learn by seeing. We learn by speaking. We learn by listening. So there are many activities we do and through which we learn many things. And those all learnings have a greater impact on our minds and that's how we become intelligent and do many course which uh, which for a machine is a bit complex task right so when we when i say that we learn by listening reading, understanding, then there comes a field called natural language processing. Then we see and we learn, right? We see others, we see the environment and we learn a lot of things. We observe other people, we learn a lot of things. And that's how we become intelligent. By seeing something, if you learn that field in nowadays is called computer vision. And in all of these fields, whether it is natural language processing, computer vision, or these are two broad domains, we actually learn the gist of something. And we can refer that gist anytime, right? We, we observe something uh, from the people around us, and then we have some learning in our mind, and we can recall that learning at any point of time. So we saved it in somehow in our mind that we can recall and we can update that as well. That recalling and updating by that learning is something which is called model in machine learning and deep learning. A model is something which is called a little brain we can update that brain, we can, piece of brain, I should say, that we can update that piece of brain, we can recall the information stored in it, we can use that information at any point of time. So in machine learning, we actually use many mathematical and statistical techniques to build that small piece of brain. That is machine learning. Then here comes deep learning. Deep learning is overall based on how our nervous system works, how our neurons work, how they are connected, how one neuron is attached to another, 
the the web of biological neurons is kind of we are trying to replicate in an artificial way and that artificially connected neurons is called ann artificial neural network and it is also able to learn many tremendous things which we can use which we can recall which we can update but the mechanism is slightly different from machine learning ones machine learning models but the mechanism of creating as well as utilizing those little pieces of brain is broadly different from machine learning concepts and model building deep learning has enormous power the data we provide to deep learning models millions and trillions of data if we can provide then they will come up with better to better solutions because it learns by seeing the data it learns by analyzing the data so the how much data the variance in the data if is large deep learning models will be more generalized right and when you say that we provide more data we need to provide more computing power so here we actually dealing with a large piece of data and that's how we come across the field of big data the data which is which can be in any form which can be in form of tables in form of records in form of uh, images videos uh, maybe in form of sounds any kind of data in form of signals as well so data comes in many formats and if we are trying to include data and millions of that data then we require something which can open and handle such large piece of data which can store it and which can help us to retrieve any piece of that data at any point of time when we require it so we require large uh we require complex softwares which can handle that piece of data and that's how big data come into the picture we might need to place that data at different computers at one point of time and might be using that data uh combining into the air right so let's say we have saved one piece of data at one system let's say we have saved uh, the images in one system the the metadata related to those images in another system and maybe sounds and videos in another system and then on the real time we are actually merging and utilizing them right so big data plays uh the big queries plays an important role to handle such large amount of data and also here comes an important field which is evolving from so many years and now being utilized a lot is cloud computing because we cannot buy such large computing power just by ourselves it's it's too tough to buy everything by ourselves just for a for a uh, small short span of time so what we do is to rent those systems on cloud servers <coughs> the functionalities provided by different uh, companies which are large giants like AWS Azure and GCP provide those functionalities to use cloud servers and they have many cloud um functionalities available to handle large amount of data and to build the models so you can also refer one of my blogs so let me open that for you so here i've written a post related to how data science and is is related 
how these services are provided by different companies like Azure, Amazon Web Services, and Google Cloud Platform. So we can refer this picture in which data science services is provided by different giant companies. So here for data storage, we have some mechanisms available with AWS, we call it S3 bucket. With Google Cloud Platform, we call it Google Cloud Storage. And with Azure, we call it Azure Blob, right? Whereas for this uh, big data proceedings, we have Amazon Elastic MapReduce, right? That is a fully managed big data platform for managing and processing large and complex data sets. And then with Google Cloud Platforms, we have Google Cloud Dataflow. The same mechanism is called Google Cloud Data Flow. Whereas with Azure, we call it HD Insights. It does the more or less the similar task of handling the large data. Whereas to build a, a machine learning and deep learning pipelines, we have machine learning engine, right? And here comes Google Cloud Machine Learning Engine, here is Azure Machine Learning Engine, right? So here it is called Azure SageMaker to build machine learning pipelines. So this is Azure SageMaker, right? There are some additional databases also available which help in uh, doing the background work related to these things. So you can refer any time to this blog and you can reply if you want more information related to this. So let me again go to the, my slide. Okay. Okay. So we were talking about big data. Now here comes data analytics, right? So when we have a data of every kind, we want to extract the meaningful insights from that data. So here comes this small field of data analytics, which understands and explores the data, which explores that which fields are important, which fields are not, which features are important, which columns are important. Columns are called features. So which features are important for analysis to understand that whether our business will grow depending upon these features or not. Right, someone is trying to join. Give me a second. Okay. Then here we see data science, which is actually is on the overlap with every other field available. Right. So data science is just actually get it actually, actually based on the techniques and the models which we are building using AI or machine learning or deep learning, handling big data along with data analytics. So this is this actually lies on the overlap. So hence, uh, if we want to work with um, with large organizations with uh, a, a better salary package, we can go with this profile and this actually help us to rise a lot in today's scenario, right? Because we are surrounded by large amount of data around us, right? So this is all about data science and artificial intelligence and their overlapping. Now let's see this picture. So we already understood artificial intelligence a lot. Uh, when I was explaining the previous slide here also, we see that artificial intelligence is having different fields, reasoning, machine learning, multi-agent systems, technologies, web processing, knowledge. <coughs> so anything we actually use and utilize in everyday task comes into artificial intelligence.
so there are different fields which is text and image mining links terminology ontology semantic web knowledge signal speech natural language so it, it is used in every place right this multi-agent systems in which we talk about collective behaviors it means um it means there are um, collective behaviors not only human intelligence is actually being talked in under ai there are other uh, creatures on the earth and they also have some intelligent techniques some intelligent uh, behavior in them right so we see that if we place a piece of sugar at some place the ants are getting accumulated where at that sugar piece is located so how they know that the sugar piece is located at this place so there is a there is an algorithm which is being developed over the time it is called ant colony optimization aco ant colony optimization which actually talks about how ants follow a trail how ants follow each other to reach at a particular place where that sugar is being deposited right how birds actually flocks together and usually don't collide you might have seen a swarm of bird in the evening or maybe in the morning there is a large herd of birds they are actually swaying and waving together but they don't collide so they are also intelligent because they actually maintain the distance between themselves when they are flying that's why they don't collide so we have an algorithm under under a discipline called genetic algorithms and optimizations and that algorithm is called particle swarm optimization pco particle swarm optimization and in under that algorithm we talk about how we can maintain the distance as well as velocity of any particle so that they flock together but they don't collide so how this is actually being used to find a solution in machine learning or deep learning actually in machine learning or deep learning we are trying to find out that how a particular model how a particular machine learning model is reaching to the conclusion is reaching to the final answer is reaching to the final solution so it actually searches for the solution so here we are actually using the term search because deep learning model or machine learning model start from some random solution and moves toward the right solution so for it also it has a task to search the solution in the whole space of the problems or the solutions so the searching is actually we can compare the search terms to the ant searching to how they search sugar to the searching of birds they actually search for the food so you see that every other creature in this whole wide world searches for food so they actually follow some mechanism to search for it like ants actually deposit pheromone is one of the chemical compound which they deposit keep depositing on the places that's how they actually build a trail right and birds also maintain their distance at velocity and search for the food and they don't collide where they see food they actually sit together and eat and when they fly they don't collide right so this is a collective behavior we are talking about so the collective behaviors comes under multi agent systems multi agent means many persons many replicas 
are working for the same to to actually uh, search for the same solution and nowadays drones are actually working on this mechanism only if you think about single drone that is working on maybe single agent system but if you think about multi drones and you have seen the formations on 26 january that at india gate there are multiple drones and those are forming some figures in, and actually uh, creating animations in the sky then these algorithms these natural behaviors these collective behaviors are really playing an important role to place those drones in the sky so that they actually work together but do they don't collide right so nowadays we see that many almost all the techniques we are studying under this ai or data science is having origins with natural beings or natural uh, agents persons or might be any creature they are coming from there they having an inspiration which is coming from those little creature or it might be coming from human beings but when we have seen something naturally we try to mimic that thing artificially and the process of building those artificial things is called ai is we study under ai we also study those things under data science so keeping that thing in mind let me proceed with the project streams what are the probable project streams we could work upon while learning artificial intelligence and if we want to become a good data scientist or ai engineer you should have ex experience with all the project streams or you might have specialized in one or two right so let me proceed with that so here come some computer vision project ideas and they have their own place in the industry nowadays many companies are building the applications using these different domains coming under computer vision so one is object detection you see the objects on the road you can locate or, or your device can locate the objects so that is called object detection also can classify those objects right so let me give you an example like uh, if you are seeing trees by the road side or car moving or a bike or a person is crossing the road so you can identify these different objects and you can classify that this is a tree this is a human this is a car moving or maybe this is just a road sign and to give which is having at large risk so right because if a human is crossing the road the car should stop if there is a traffic sign it it shouldn't stop it should understand that sign <coughs> so these um autonomous car making companies are actually using these technologies of object detection then here comes next thing is image segmentation so you see that there are uh autonomous uh, those um, supply chains companies which actually initiate the process and they prepare their material they pack their material and they deliver it to the customers you can think about maybe chips company or any other company which is packing their materials autonomously and actually delivering delivering it to the people right so they are using image segmentation techniques also it is being used in agriculture right where there is a large field and not india it is being utilized but we are we started to explore these fields as well there are so many maybe uh, the fruit trees they are planted 
at your hectares of uh, land and now you want to pluck all the all the fruits which are there on the trees so to identify this is a fruit and this is a leaf you should have some mechanism you, you should have something which can identify this is a fruit right and only there is a robotic hand and it will go and pluck that fruit and it, it can also able to pack that and deliver it to the clients so there this technique of image segmentation is working to get the boundary of the fruit right like these we have other techniques other project areas such as face detection and recognition image captioning in which every image is being understood by the computer or a model and it actually generates the generates the caption of that image then here comes image generation you just provide the text it will generate the images automatically for you then here comes video analytics which actually understand the video what are the repeated frames what are not generates a summary search of like you search google you can search a video as well right you just write that uh, just uh, locate the pointer where the comedy seeing is getting started so you write this query and your movie starts from there only so that is also a one of the lucrative fields then here come medical image analysis the patients with x-rays or mri scans doesn't have to wait in a large queue for a radiologist to actually get through an appointment this can be done using the preliminary task can be done by using machines and they can analyze this is the important portion where person is having the issue maybe the doctor is there to to actually uh, give you more insights of it that whether it is more severe or less severe but at least a machine can draw a boundary around the lesion of affected skin of affected organ then there comes autonomous driving so we actually talked a bit about that in the beginning then here comes augmented reality and virtual reality so you see that there are many applications are being built there but many games are available in which people are wearing uh, a specs a different kind of specs and they actually able to see a different world that is virtual reality what is augmented reality when we place some smiley or some uh, you might have seen to to actually educate little children there are some um some artificially created lions or we can say animals which we can place outside our computer screens so that is augmented reality when you augment the reality with those things that's called augmented reality then here comes surveillance and security so there are surveillance cameras and being installed everywhere and it can able to identify a robber if someone is trying to invade in your house then these areas are also very important and these comes under computer vision techniques then there are natural language processing project ideas so something which is related to language speaking understanding language uh means reading so everything that comes under language comes uh with natural language processing right so it is sentiment analysis right people write reviews and other people generate a sentiment out of it then there is text classification right whether this this is um people are trying to getting angry at this paragraph they are polite they are happy they are sad so that is text classification then here comes named entity recognition means whether this is noun or this is a verb or what what is it right what this term is then here comes text summarization so have a large piece of paper and summarize the whole document that is text summarization then language translation translating one type of language into another maybe english to french 
English to Hindi, Hindi to Hindi to other Hindi to other languages. Then here comes chatbots. So we are making use of them in our daily life. Then here come text generation. So you provide a um, piece of text and system is able to complete the whole sentence. You, you might say that uh, I am I'm Jaya Gupta. I have studied from these, these, these places, right? And I belong to, when you say belong to, uh, means I've studied in Kanpur and and other places and when I say I belongs to the system might be able to complete the sentence to add this particular region of India right so it can generalize and complete the sentence for you it can create a stories as well so it's getting repeated okay, let's come to the next point that is text to speech and speech to text conversions so we see that when we say something that is in the form of signal and that signal is getting converted to English text or Hindi text or any other text, right? So that is that mechanism is called text to speech and speech to text conversion. Then here comes topic modeling, it means we are actually uh, modeling one topic and trying to extract the meaningful information that is written in that top under that topic. Right? That is natural language processing ideas. Similarly, there are healthcare project ideas available. Medical chatbot, medical image analysis, electronic health record analysis, clinical trial prediction, patient risk, risk stratification, medical adherence. So there are other topics which is related to only healthcare because this is one of the booming field nowadays. People are working on this field and in the coming years, We'll have so many medical devices available in the market, which help the doctors to analyze patients, patient records, maybe the claims which are um, filed by the patients to the investment companies, to the insurance companies, if they are making a fraud or not. So there are many aspects which is related to only healthcare and a lot of being, a lot of work being done uh, a lot of research is being done in, in this domain also. Then let's dive into data scientist job profiles which are available in the market. Right? So data scientist, data engineer, business intelligent analysis, machine learning engineer, big data engineer, data analyst, data visualization developer, data governance analyst, research scientist, data product manager, there are, these are some, only some of the fields. There are deep learning engineer, right? There are computer vision engineer experts, you might say. There are DevOps engineer, right? There are Kubernetes and other kinds of engineers which, which understand cloud as well as data science. There is a NLP expert. So there is a reinforcement learning, the engineers who are actually making multi-agent systems. So robotics engineer, many profiles are available which are related to this field, which have a common characteristics between artificial intelligence and data science. So this is all about today's session. If you have any doubts, you can ask me. Thank you a lot for joining this session and uh, I'll be sharing a feedback link so you can fill the form and encourage me to take the further sessions. Thank you for joining this webinar. If there are any questions, I'm happy to answer. Okay, thanks a lot.